Hello and welcome to this short tutorial where I'm going to take you through all the different return to home settings on the Avatar 2 and also your on signal loss action and how to set them appropriately depending on where you're flying. So in order to do that let's hop into the goggles, sunglasses off, goggles on and let's get into the menu system. So the first thing we need to do is pull right on the joystick in order to enter the menu, go down until we see settings and then we want to click on safety up at the top. Now, if we scroll down here, we can see we have return to home altitude. This is basically the altitude the drone is going to climb to during a return to home event. So you want to make sure that this is set higher than any obstacles around you, but also within the sort of legal limits of wherever it is that you're flying. And something else you need to bear in mind about your return to home altitude is if you're flying somewhere really mountainous or hilly and you've flown to the peak of a mountain or something, say you're now about 250 meters up, even though you're still, you know, within legal limits of being how high you are above the ground, your return to home altitude, you're gonna have to change this so it's also set appropriately. So you're gonna wanna increase it. So it's say you're at 250 meters at the peak of this mountain, you then should increase your return to home altitude once you get to the top to say 300 meters so that you then have enough clearance in the event of a return to home needing to be engaged. So I'm gonna go back into the menu system and we're now gonna go through the on signal loss action. But before we do that, I'm just gonna show you the update home point part here. So if you wanna change the home point of the drone, just fly to the location you want to set as your new home point, click update home point, and then this will now be your new home point on the drone. So onto the signal loss action. Now in order to access that, we need to go all the way down here to our advanced safety settings. Now, when we click on that, we see we have aircraft signal lost action, and there are going to be three different options here. So the top we have hover, then we have land, and then we have return to home. If you're enjoying this video so far, consider becoming a member on Patreon as it's one of the best ways to support the work that I'm doing here. And I've also currently started work on a cinematic FPV course. And if that's something that you would be interested in, you can sign up below to get on the wait list and that's going to give you the latest developments and information on the course. Now, I've actually also started a weekly newsletter, which gives you the latest drone news, hot tips and discounts. And you can find all of that in the video description. Whilst you're down there, tap the subscribe button and let's get back into it. So your on signal loss action needs to reflect the environment in which you're flying in. So say you're flying through a forest or something, somewhere that's under tree cover, but with unsuitable ground for you to land on in case of an emergency, this is where you would want to set the drone to hover in case of a signal loss. In that instance, if the drone starts to hover, you can then move yourself closer to where the machine is in order to recover signal and then fly it back to wherever you are. Now, the next one down we had was land. Now you want to use this preferably probably somewhere like indoors. So if you lost signal here, the drone can safely land on the floor with no issues. Now, you definitely don't want to have a return to home in any of those two previously explained scenarios. One, if you're indoors, the drone is going to try and ascend through the roof of your building to that return to home altitude in order to make it back. And the laws of physics tell it that uh, that's not going to happen. And then also the same thing if you're under tree cover and you send the drone up to the return to home altitude, it's probably going to crash into the trees above and then make its way back down to earth less gracefully than you would like to uh, have it come down. So the only option where we want return to home to be actually activated is in actually probably 90% of the options you would be flying in. When you're in a nice open space, there are no obstructions above the drone that would restrict it from doing a return to home safely. Now, like I mentioned, you do want to make sure that altitude is set correctly. There's no obstacle avoidance on the Avata 2. So if it encounters an obstacle on its way home, it will crash into it. And something else you need to bear in mind as well from a bit of testing that I've done, if you're flying in manual mode using the FPV3 controller and you lose signal and return to home is triggered you need to make sure that you push your stick to at least 50 percent if not preferably push it a bit past 50 percent because there are situations in which the drone can reconnect to the controller but not good enough for you to see it's connected and if your throttle stick is in a lower than 50 percent position the drone is going to accept this as a throttle input and start descending which could lead to an accident so if you're in manual mode just make sure you push that stick up past 50 percent just to make sure you don't encounter this. But that's basically everything you need to know about the return to home altitude, how to set it appropriately, especially if you're flying in the mountains and things, and how to set your signal loss action appropriately to reflect the environment in which you're flying. So that's all you need to know for this one. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.